winning winning blueprint presents in the lab room exclusive with limited interruptions in the lab room presents the five part series the league part 1 the future Welcome. You are in the lab room. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. This is The League, a five-part series. Today, part one, the future. And I think the NFL's future is so bright because of one particular position, that being the quarterback position. I've been watching the National Football League since a little tight, since I was a wee bit tall. And I've never seen this much talent, this much young talent at the quarterback position. And I tell you what, this league, if these quarterbacks are what we think they are and continue to stay healthy, that's one of the biggest keys, staying healthy. We've seen it with a couple of these guys on this list, and we'll talk about them here shortly. But health and continuing to mature as quarterbacks, I tell you what, the NFL is the brightest it's ever been at the quarterback position. And as we all know, and I say this all the time, it's one of my favorite sayings. If you don't have a quarterback, you don't have a chance in the National Football League. It's as simple as that. You don't have the signal caller that can take you to the next level. You don't stand a chance in the National Football League. And I think in this league, we've got quarterbacks at or under the age of 25 that are just dynamic. Now, that next tier up, those guys that are pushing 30, not quite there, they're extraordinary as well. And so this league is just oozing with talent at the quarterback position. And those guys pushing 30 that aren't quite there yet are Joe Flacco, Matt Ryan, and also Aaron Rodgers. So you've got a slew of quarterbacks. And look, we always forget about Eli Manning. Don't forget about Eli Manning. He's right there with that bunch as well. He's got two Super Bowl titles. We always like to forget about him when we talk about the creme de la creme, the elite quarterbacks in this league. Eli Manning is a two-time Super Bowl winning championship quarterback. And so I think that people make a mistake by forgetting to mention him in that group. When they start talking about Aaron Rodgers, when they start talking about guys who are really good, like Drew Brees, don't forget to mention a guy like Eli Manning, because you won't usually hear his name in the discussion for MVP. But come crunch time, fourth quarter, game on the line, in the postseason, there's not many guys that you would rather hand the football to than Eli Manning. But look, forget about all that. We're here to talk about the future. And I think the future in the NFL is at the quarterback position. And let's get into those quarterbacks and how they're unique because each of them are different in their own way. They bring a different skill set to the table and they pose different problems for opposing defenses. So let's talk about the future in the National Football League. Let's start off with Matthew Stafford, the elder statesman of the group. He's 25. And a lot of times we like to forget about him when talking about young quarterbacks that are taking this league by storm because he's been in the league four years. He's going into his fifth season in the National Football League, and you tend to forget, hey, this guy's only 25 years old. Now, I talked about injuries and guys needing to stay healthy. Here's one of them. His first two years in his career in the National Football League marred by injuries. And so when healthy, he's played 16 games the last two seasons, so he's starting to get over that injury bug. But I tell you what, if he can stay healthy, Here's a guy that can put up monster numbers. And we know a large part of that is, of course, helping us to Megatron. It's great when you have a guy like Megatron that you can throw the football to. But make no mistake about it, Matthew Stafford has elite talent in the National Football League. You don't throw 41 touchdowns versus 16 or 17 interceptions and over 5,000 yards and lead your team to the postseason with a 10-6 and six mark. Unless you're an elite quarterback. Everyone can't do that in the National Football League. So, you know this guy has elite talent. He's got the arm talent. At 6'3", 235 or so, 230, we're talking about a guy that has a huge arm. Sometimes that arm gets him in trouble. It did a lot in 2012. 
they didn't have the receivers and the weapons that they had in 2012. Guys were injured. He really missed Nate Burleson a lot in 2012. But I tell you what, his arm talent is some of the best in the National Football League. The thing that I think separates him from a lot of these other quarterbacks in this league is he can throw from different arm angles. You watch Matthew Stafford throw the football. One time he's coming here. Another time he's coming here. Another time he's coming here. He's throwing the football from different arm slots. Hard to really bat his passes down because he sees a defender here. He's coming with the football here, sidearm. He's coming with a three-quarter action. He's coming with a half over the top. Then he's coming over the top. And the guy's 6'3", so when he wants to step into it and throw it over the top, he can. When he wants to come off to the side, he can. When he wants to give you that three-quarters look, he can. He can give it to you from different arm slots, and it's hard to figure out where this guy is throwing the football from. And so he's very unique in that sense. Not really going to run for a lot of yards, but if you need a guy to stick a throw in there, Matthew Stafford can do that, and I think he's one of the young, budding stars in the National Football League. I really like what he's doing in Detroit. I thought he regressed a bit in 2012, but I think that had a lot to do with some of the injuries at the receiver position. It was all Megatron and nothing else out there at receiver. And so they've addressed that issue a little bit. They brought some guys in. think they're going to help him tremendously in Detroit. And now they have Reggie Bush. That's going to give that running game a shot in the arm. And it's going to give him another target to throw the football to out of the backfield. Isn't it nice when you can dump off a screen at the 22-yard line and have it go 78 yards for a touchdown, and you get those 78 yards on your passing stats <laughs> as a quarterback? That's the best feeling in the world. And trust me, with Reggie Bush on your roster, you're going to get quite a few of those dump-offs that go for long gains that adds to your stat line. So Matthew Stafford, to me, one of those young budding stars in the league that has this future bright in the National Football League. Let's take a look at another guy. And here are these wave of third season guys, guys going into their third seasons, right around that 23, 24-year-old mark. Let's start with the head of that class, Cam Newton. Cameron Newton. This is the guy that intrigues me greatly because if he could just get the mental aspect of the game down pat, I don't think there's a better quarterback built in the league. This guy, to me, is a machine the way he's put together. If you look at a quarterback and you want to put together a pitcher-esque quarterback in the National Football League for the future, the way the game is being played now, it's Cam Newton. I mean, 6'5", 245, big arm, 4'6", 40. I mean, this guy can do it all on the football field. And the only thing that he's missing right now is the maturity and the leadership qualities that you look for in a guy that is the head of your franchise. And I think he'll have that soon enough. There's no doubt in my mind that come this season or maybe next year, Cam Newton will be the full package at the quarterback position. But this guy can do it all. And what he's done so far in his career, just short of remarkable, if you take a look at it. And really, you need to take a step back and realize what this young man has done in his very brief career. You look at his rookie season, and that one was one for the ages. You can go ahead and archive that. I'm venture to say that that will never be duplicated again. Because here's a rookie coming into the National Football League throwing for over 4,000 yards. That's unheard of. That generally doesn't happen. And then he did something that no other quarterback had ever done in their rookie season. Start their career off with two consecutive 400-yard passing games. That in itself, mind-boggling. That throw to Steve Smith in that game against, I want to say it was the Packers. Off of one foot, about 60 yards. Wow. That takes some kind of gift. And Cam Newton has it all. And so, this guy can run it. If you want to see Cam Newton at his best running the football, you, you put in that Atlanta Falcons tape in week 14 in 2012. Nine carries, 116 yards, touchdown or two. He was magnificent in that game. If you want to see Cam Newton flinging the football around the field and making things happen, put on one of those tapes from 2011 in his rookie campaign at the beginning of the season when he passed for over 400 yards in those first two games. I mean, the guy is electric at the quarterback position. Again, mental aspect for him. He gets that down pat. 
and becomes locked in here, I think he's the most dangerous weapon at the quarterback position, potentially in the National Football League. You move on to another guy in that class that not many people talk about, but I think is just as good as a lot of these guys in the National Football League and has the NFL's future just as bright as a lot of these other guys, but yet he's not talked about. Another one of those guys in that same class with Cam Newton, Andy Dalton, the Red Rifle. Now, you look at Andy Dalton. Here's a guy, not physically imposing, 6'2", 215 pounds or so. You look at him, solidly built guy, can throw the football, doesn't have the strongest arm, doesn't wow you in that aspect, isn't the most athletic guy, he isn't slow either, he can move, but doesn't wow you there either. What Andy Dalton does is everything well. Nothing great, but everything well. He manages the game. He's a great leader. He's a vocal guy on the sidelines. You see him talking to everyone, getting everyone mentally prepared for what they have to embark on when they take the field. He's a great general in that sense. He's a guy that gets it done by any means necessary. If he's got to run and dive on third and seven to get eight yards, he'll do it. If he's got to stick a throw in there on third and six, he'll do it. He's got to take that next step, though, because everything is going up and up for Andy Dalton. He's on the up and up. You look at his stats from his rookie season to his sophomore year, and everything went up. The passing yards went up. The efficiency went up. Completion percentage up. Touchdowns up. Everything went up for Andy Dalton, so he's getting better as a passer, and that's great to see from a young quarterback like Andy Dalton in Cincinnati. He's done something that none of those Cincinnati Bengals great quarterbacks have done before him. Not Ken Anderson, not Boomer Esiason. He's taken the Cincinnati Bengals to two consecutive playoff appearances, something that has never been done in Cincinnati Bengals franchise history. So you know this young man is playing some outstanding football in Cincinnati. Now, the key is take that next step. That playoff game against the Texans, I keep talking about it because he missed a throw that if you want to take that next step, you want to be an elite quarterback in this league, you got to make it. He missed A.J. Green in the end zone for a touchdown that probably would have won that football game. You got to make that throw. I'm looking for Andy Dalton to take that next step, but he is a very, very good quarterback, very underrated quarterback in this league, and I think he is part of this new wave of quarterbacks that has the future extremely bright in the National Football League. And with A.J. Green out there, as his partner in crime, they're going to make some beautiful music for years to come. As we move on to the next quarterback that I think is really helping change the face of the National Football League, in that same class, again, a lot of people weren't really looking and expecting a lot out of this guy, but we saw the talent in college at Nevada. And I'm talking of, of course, Colin Kaepernick. Here's a guy in Nevada playing some really good football out in the WAC conference. You, you see him sparingly. You don't really see him on national television that often. Had Boise State on the ropes. Should have beat them. Did not. Gets into the National Football League. Is a backup behind Alex Smith. He's just waiting out his turn. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And then finally, Alex Smith goes down with an injury. Concussion. Can't come back that next week. He puts on a performance for the ages. Doesn't give Alex Smith his job back. The rest is history. You've got a new quarterback in San Francisco, and his name is Colin Kaepernick. Let's look at this guy, 6'4", 230, chiseled, built. And again, uh, much like Cam Newton, this guy has all the physical attributes you look for in a quarterback. You know what? To me, the upside for this guy is the highest of any quarterback in this group because you want to talk about arm strength? And everyone loves throwing Joe Flacco out there. Joe Flacco, Joe Flacco. He's got the strongest arm in the league. I, I beg to differ because Aaron Rodgers can rip it. And so can this guy. Cam Newton is right up there as well. But so can Colin Kaepernick. You don't see many guys throw it harder than this guy right here. And you want to talk about some tight windows and fitting passes into some tight windows? This guy can do it. But not only... Is he an extremely hard thrower of the football? He's extremely accurate as well. And that's a deadly combination in the National Football League. And you want to talk about passing the football? You want to see one of his virtuoso performances passing the football? Look at that Chicago Bears game. Week 11, first start for Colin Kaepernick in his career. Look at what he did to the Chicago Bears. 
on the big stage on Monday Night Football. Absolutely dismembered the Chicago Bears defense as if they were some peewee league group out there on the field. It was amazing to watch. I mean, he absolutely carved them up. How could Jim Harbaugh turn this football team back over to Alex Smith? He just could not do it. You want to see the greatest overall performance in a game by a dual threat quarterback? Look at the Green Bay Packers divisional round playoff game. Can you do it any better than that? We're talking about a guy that combined for over 400 yards, well over 400 yards of total offense for his football team. We're talking about over 260 yards passing and another 180 plus running the football. This guy did everything in that game. And if you can't see the greatness there, then look no further than the Super Bowl. They were getting drubbed in the Super Bowl. And most teams, most quarterbacks, they put their head down and they say, hey, they got us. They were the better team. And they tuck their tails between their legs and they go off running home. Not Colin Kaepernick. He brings the 49ers group together. And look, you can talk about the blackout all you like. I want to talk about Colin Kaepernick and how he galvanized his team, brought them back, played some inspired football, and had them within one possession of winning that football game. And so I tell you what, all the intangibles are there. This guy can run. This guy can throw it with the best of them. And he's got the leadership skills. He can bring a team back. We've seen him lose games. He lost a game against the Rams with that bad pitch. He didn't put his head down. He came back. He rallied the troops. They got drubbed in Seattle at the end of the season. He could have used that game as one to say, hey, maybe we're not ready to take that next step. He didn't do that. They came back, they weathered the storm, and this guy was a huge part of that. I love Colin Kaepernick and everything he brings to the table. And he potentially could be one of the most galvanizing stars in this group. And I tell you what, with that San Francisco 49ers roster that he is a part of, there could be a lot of championships in the future of one Mr. Colin Kaepernick. This guy is a star to watch out, and he's rising to epic levels in the National Football League. You look at the next wave. And that was that third year group. Those guys going into their third seasons right around 23, 24, going to 25 years old, right around that group. Now we're getting into that rookie class that just passed in 2012, that group that's going to ascend to the next level that's right around 23, 24 years old or so. And they're going into their second year. We're going to start with the head of that class, Andrew Luck. And his rookie season was no fluke. It was no luck. No pun intended. Actually, it was intended. But it was no luck in Indianapolis because what he did with that team, and it was a ragtag group. You take Reggie Wayne out of the equation, of course you can't. But I'm just saying, you take Reggie Wayne out of that equation, who is this guy throwing the football to? And Vic Ballard was his running back. And so he was doing a lot with a little but I tell you what, anytime life hands you lemons, Andrew Luck can make some damn good lemonade. And it was scrum dillyumptious. And that Indianapolis Colts offense ran like a well-oiled machine. It wasn't always the prettiest, but it ran like a well-oiled machine. When Andrew Luck got it revved up, and of all the quarterbacks in this rookie class, he was asked to throw it the most. Some other quarterbacks may have been asked to do more for their team, and as a whole, but no one was asked to chuck it around the football field more than Andrew Luck. And he did more than his fair share of standing up to that pressure and owning up to the responsibility of being not only the number one quarterback drafted in the 2012 NFL draft, not only the successor to Peyton Manning, but the leader of the Indianapolis Colts. He did a wonderful job of stepping up to the forefront and manning up that responsibility. I thought him doing all that he could. There was games when this guy threw the football over 50 times. And it was like nothing for him to throw it over 40. That was a normal game. 42 attempts for Andrew Luck was a normal game. For most guys that are rookies, that's going to yield you two or three interceptions per outing. Andrew Luck found a way. And he started off rough. This was a guy that was turning it over left and right early on in the season. But he managed to win football games. And then the numbers got better. Before you looked up at the end of the season, 
it was a better than one-to-one -one touchdown to interception ratio. And as a rookie, that's all you can really ask for. He got it to 23 touchdowns, 17 interceptions. And I tell you what, this guy was phenomenal, well over 4,000 yards passing. And I tell you what, Andrew Luck had one heck of a rookie campaign. And I think the sky is the limit for this guy. If you're the Indianapolis Colts, how spoiled are you? You're like little brats in Indianapolis. Me being a Redskins fan, it was tough suffering through the years of no franchise QB. Here you are, you get Peyton Manning in 98, you have him all the way till 2011, you suffer through one measly, horrendous season, and then you get Andrew Luck, and it's like all is forgiven, all is well in Indianapolis. How spoiled are you guys in Indianapolis? You guys have it so good, you really don't understand how well you have it in Indy because you have another young, promising quarterback that I think might be able to exceed Peyton in the amount of Super Bowl championships that he's able to accomplish and capture in Indianapolis because this guy has talent. And the more talent they surround him with in Indianapolis, the more dangerous Andrew Luck will be for the Indianapolis Colts. And I think he is one of the most talented rookies because a lot of people don't talk about his athleticism. This guy is sneaky, athletic. And I tell you what, you combine that with the poise, the moxie, and the ability to just win. He's a winner, a natural born winner. You put all of that together in one package, you get Andrew Luck. And to me, that is the blueprint for winning in the National Football League. Another shooting star in this league, Andrew Luck. So now we move on to the next pick in that draft with Andrew Luck, Robert Griffin III. And here's a guy that we all know the immense talent and athleticism that this guy possesses. Also, the great arm talent that this guy has. For me, 6'2", 220, 225 pounds, 215 pounds. You're looking at a guy that's 23 years old. So, again, very young. A lot of groin to do. But he says all the right things. He does all the right things. He's a media darling right now. And that could be a gift and a curse. But if you're playing well, look, if you're playing good football, all of that stuff will take care of itself. What he has to worry about, and, and as a Redskins fan, what I'm worried about is him taking care of his body. We all see the talent. We all know what he possesses on the football field and what he can accomplish and what he can do and how dangerous an asset he is when on the field. But we have to keep him on the field and he has to stay healthy. And what I really am a little bit disappointed in is the fact that he doesn't have a baseball background like a Colin Kaepernick, like a Russell Wilson. Those guys know how to slide. You know why they know how to slide? Because they play baseball. Robert Griffin III didn't play baseball. He was a track guy. He doesn't know how to slide. So he's going to have to find ways to get down, get out of bounds, not take those senseless shots when out of the pocket because he's got too much talent to be wasted getting injured, tearing ACLs and MCLs and PCLs because he's running around and he doesn't know how to get down. Have to get out of bounds. Can't take the shots that he took in his rookie campaign. But this guy is dynamic. We all know the talent. I don't have to sit here and regurgitate the numbers to you. This guy was rookie of the year. He was a pro bowler. He did everything he could. He put the Redskins on his back. He said all the right things. When the Redskins were 3-6, and six, season looked like it was pretty much over. Mike Shanahan had essentially said as much. Robert Griffin III said, hey, we're not packing this thing in. It's one game at a time. We'll find a way to dig ourselves out of this hole. And what did we do? Piece by piece, brick by brick, the Redskins put together a seven-game winning streak, culminating in an NFC East championship. For the first time, they've been able to call themselves NFC East champs since 1999. They were partying like it was 1999 in Washington. And a huge part of why? <laughs> you guessed it. Robert Griffin III. And so this guy has the potential, the speed, the athleticism, the quicks, the arm strength, the smarts. He has everything you look for in an elite quarterback that can take you to the next level. He just has to stay healthy. Mike Shanahan has to have a hand in that, and so does Robert Griffin III taking care of himself 
on the field. This guy can do it all on the field, and I think if he can stay healthy, the Redskins can surround him with more talent offensively, can get their defense together. They could have a scary group for years to come. And to me, he epitomizes what this new NFL is all about. We talk about the read option all the time and that new pistol formation that a lot of teams are using. It's all the rage in the National Football League. And of course, it'll die down over time. But right now, guys like him, Russell Wilson, Colin Kaepernick, Cam Newton are all ushering in this new wave of NFL quarterbacking. And I think that Robert Griffin III right now is the poster child for it. And again, it's a gift and a curse because you can get injured playing that style of football and they're going to have to dial it back. They're going to have to scale it back in 2013. Be anxious to see how they use Robert Griffin III because his involvement in that offense also spearheaded another rookie to have a huge breakout season in Alfred Moore. So Robert Griffin III is a huge part of what the Redskins want to do now and moving forward. And for the first time in a long time, the Washington Redskins have a franchise quarterback. His name is Robert Griffin III, and he can take them to heights they haven't seen since the 80s. And so here's another huge star in the NFL landscape in the making in Robert Griffin III. We move on to another pick in this draft class. One that I think had his ups and his downs in his rookie campaign, but the Dolphins are sold on this guy. And they've been looking for that next guy after Dan Marino. And they've been searching far and wide. We've seen a slew of quarterbacks come through there. Ray Lucas, Jay Fiedler, Greasy, Henny, and the rest of those guys. A slew of quarterbacks coming through Miami looking to solidify themselves as that next guy, the heir pair to Dan Marino. The Dolphins think they have found that guy in quarterback Ryan Tannehill. 6'4", 230, big presence in the pocket, big, tall, physical guy. What separates him from the rest of these quarterbacks in this group that I think are the future of the league is that he was an ex-receiver. And so he sees the quarterback position a little bit differently than all the rest of these quarterbacks. Him being an ex-receiver he knows exactly what these receivers are going through, how they need to stop in these little zones and these little pockets to get open, where he needs to lead them with the football to allow them to make a play going up the field. And so he has a different feel for the quarterback position. And again, much like another quarterback on this list in Andrew Luck, sneaky athleticism. He can run. He can move. Doesn't show you that all the time, but he can run. He can move. He's a guy that can move around back there. And so his arm is strong. Sometimes he doesn't use the best touch and precision on the football, but he possesses an arm that can get up there and throw the football down the field. He can throw it to all portions of the field. And I think that when he becomes more consistent, he had some stretches in 2012 in his rookie campaign where this guy was lights out, where he was just dynamite. And there was a stretch from about week five or six to about week nine, where he just simply did not turn over the football. And at the beginning of the season, this guy was a turnover machine. He had three turnovers in his first game against the Texans. Another two against the Arizona Cardinals. That was in a game, though, where he threw for well over 400 yards, and him and Brian Hartline just had a coming out party in that football game. But he still turned it over two times in that game in a loss. And so, he figured out, hey, I can't turn the football over if I want to give my team the best chance to win. He stopped turning the football over. The Dolphins won three consecutive games. They lost a game that I thought really turned the fortunes of their season when they lost to the Indianapolis Colts on the road. And a game that I thought he played spectacular. I thought he played maybe one of his best games of the season. And I thought a few of his teammates let him down in that game, and they lost that football game, a game that I thought they should have won. But... That doesn't matter. Ryan Tannehill has all the skill sets necessary to really take the Miami Dolphins from basement, seller type of team in the AFC East to a competitor, not competing for a wild card, not competing just to make headway in the AFC East, but challenging the New England Patriots for AFC East supremacy. And you need a quarterback to battle to do that. And I think they may have found their man in Miami. Now, the numbers weren't gorgeous 
for Ryan Tannehill in his rookie season. But you can see the maturation. You can see why the Dolphins feel like they have their guy. And trust me, it wasn't all smiles in Miami last year. This guy was throwing to Devon Bess, Brian Hartline, Curly, Sue, and Mo. So it wasn't like this guy was out there chucking it around to all pro receivers. This guy did not have a lot to throw to. That cupboard, pretty empty after you got past Devon Best and Brian Hartline. So now they're getting him some talent at the receiver position, at the tight end position. They're getting him guys at the skill positions for him to throw the football to. I'll be very anxious to see what Ryan Tannehill has in store for the National Football League in 2013 because I think he's a guy that is on the come up, on the rise, and one of those guys that could ascend in the ranks, in the QB ranks, in the National Football League in this upcoming season. So now we get to the final quarterback in our group that I feel like makes up the future of the National Football League at the quarterback position. And it's only fitting that it's the quarterback that was overlooked. He was too short. He couldn't get it done at the next level. He was the guy that no one was talking about in his 2012 class. I'm talking about Russell Wilson, the guy that everyone loves to overlook. No one's ever talking about this guy, yet he might be the best quarterback in this group. Now, might, it's a huge word, but he's got all the intangibles you look for in a quarterback. Much like Robert Griffin III, he knows what to say, when to say it. He can galvanize a group of guys and get them on the same page, and he's a great leader. I think that's one of the skill sets that separates him from everyone else. And one of his favorite sayings is, the separation is in the preparation. And that's what separates him from other guys. When Pete Carroll gave him the opportunity, he was ready to seize that moment, to seize that opportunity. You have to be ready at all times. You never know when your opportunity is going to come. When opportunity is going to knock, you don't know. But when it does, you got to be ready. And Russell Wilson is always ready for the moment. And early in that season, I wasn't sure. I wasn't quite sure because you saw games where this guy, he wasn't consistent. I always thought, I see more. I know this guy can play better. But I think it was more of the Seahawks having the reins on this guy, not turning him loose fully. They wanted to run the football, go play action fake, kind of babysat him early on. But then I think the game that opened my eyes, opened everyone's eyes in the National Football League to this guy and what he could do, Chicago game. Uh, they had to have it. They were down. It looked like the Bears had this one. And then Russell Wilson got his guys together and put together a drive. And then the Bears somehow miraculously were able to tie the game, send it to overtime. Seahawks get the football back. And what does Russell Wilson do? He takes his team on a drive. One that I thought changed the complexion of their season. It gave them something that didn't exist before this Bears game. Look, they were a juggernaut at home. If they were to have home field advantage, I think they would have went to the Super Bowl. But the one thing that they didn't have coming into that Bears game that they had after they left that game, confidence that they could get it done on the road. That was the one thing they were lacking last season. And after that game, they felt like they could go anywhere and get it done. And that's why you saw the maturation after that game. You want to see this guy run around? He's athletic. He's like Fran Tarkenton back there in the pocket. Smallish. He's a jitterbug. You can't really get a hold of him. He's making things happen, escaping the pocket. He can run. He can throw the football. Has a very strong arm. Forget about the hype. Forget about it. This guy can get it done. He's a winner. And you give me a winner. Every day of the week, I'll take a winner over anybody that has measurables. Forget about that. Give me the guy that wins, and all Russell Wilson knows how to do is win. All he does is win, 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 no matter what. And that's what he does. He's a winner. You want to see him run around and show you how athletic he is? You want to see an expose on how to run the football at the quarterback position? Put on the tape of Seahawks versus Bills in Canada. Absolutely destroyed the Buffalo Bills defense rushing the football. You want to see this guy in the full maturation of Russell Wilson? You want to see this guy blossom right before your eyes? He didn't have a single 300-yard performance during the regular season. He threw for over 400 yards in the NFC Divisional Round playoff game against the Falcons, a game that the Seahawks should have won. Down 20 points in the fourth quarter, this guy takes the Seahawks. So not one, not two, but three touchdown drives to take the lead, including one at the end of the game that should have won in the football game. The poise, the moxie, it's all there with Russell Wilson. This guy has 
it. All these quarterbacks in this group has it. But Russell Wilson has a lot of it. And I tell you what, the sky's the limit for this guy and all the quarterbacks that I named in this group. But much like Colin Kaepernick, he has a team that is so talented that they can win it right now. They can win it all right now. And they can win an infinite amount of championships with Russell Wilson at the quarterback position. And that goes for every quarterback and every team that I've just mentioned in this piece. Because I tell you what, if you have a quarterback, you have a chance. And all these quarterbacks that I just named, I think, make up the NFL and why it's so bright right now at the quarterback position because of the quarterbacks I just named. Russell Wilson, Ryan Tannehill, Robert Griffin III, Andrew Luck, Andy Dalton, Colin Kaepernick, Cam Newton, and Matthew Stafford. They make up the future in the National Football League. And I tell you what, the future has never been this bright at the quarterback position. And these guys are a large part of the reason why. Because in the National Football League, it's bright. As bright as it's ever been. And these quarterbacks are the future. The future. The league. Exclusive.